Welcome to the Texas Instruments ITM webinar. I am John Stevenson and with me I have Raphael Souza. Today we will be discussing a powerful capability that is present on many of TI's Cortex-M based microcontrollers. This capability is the Instrumentation Trace Macrocell, or ITM. For those of you who are new to TI's embedded software and tools ecosystem, it is an area that TI has invested heavily in over the years. The ecosystem is comprised of runtime software, including real-time operating systems like TI RTOS or Embedded Linux, and a multitude of software packages. There are development tools, including the Code Composer Studio Integrated Development Environment, JTAG debug probes, and development boards such as launch pads and evaluation modules. On top of this, there is a rich community providing expertise turnkey solutions, product support, and training. ITM stands for Instrumentation Trace Macrocell. Unlike traditional trace capabilities, ITM is an application-driven trace source that provides a high-level software view of what is going on within the application. This is very different from the low-level instruction-level view provided by traditional trace sources like the embedded trace macrocell found on some ARM-based devices. ITM makes use of hardware triggers on the device to capture samples, log events, and provide an instrumentation framework. Note that these same triggers are used for hardware breakpoints and watchpoints. Thus, if you're utilizing ITM, you will have fewer breakpoint resources available. Now let's take a look at some of the features that are possible by making use of ITM. The ability to capture performance data is always of interest to software developers. By making use of ITM, you can perform statistical profiling in Code Composer Studio. The way statistical profiling works is that it periodically samples the program counter. It is then possible to determine which functions in your application are being executed most frequently. One nice thing about statistical profiling is that you can capture this data non-intrusively without having to include any instrumentation in your code. Another nice feature is the ability to trace a variable. Anytime the address of a variable is written to, the value and time of the write are logged. This allows you to plot the changes in the variable value over time. Interrupt profiling is a great feature made possible by ITM. There are events when an interrupt is received and another when it is completed. By logging these events, we can then see when an interrupt occurs, we can see if it's preempted and which interrupt it is preempted by, and we can even calculate how long it takes to service an interrupt, including the average, worst case, and best times. I am now going to hand over control to Raphael, who is going to perform a brief demonstration that highlights a number of the key features made possible by ITM. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will be using a Cortex M4 based LM4F232 with an XDS200 debug probe. The XDS200 debug probe is required to be able to capture the data log via ITM and sent to the host PC via serial wire output. Thank you, John. I'll show how easy it is to set up and visualize the execution data, as well as extract relevant information about the running system. As John mentioned, the setup is comprised of the XDS200 emulator connected to the LM4F232EK via the 10-pin JTAG connector. For the sake of time, CCS is already running and the setup is already done. We will start with the statistical function profiling on the timers project. Let's launch the debugger. Ok, code's loaded. Uh, and the most common trace jobs can be enabled very easily. Simply go to menu tools, hardware trace analyzer, and all the jobs are here. They are dependent on the emulator and the device connected. Let's select the statistical function profiling. From this screen, you can see the settings for the statistical function profiling. Uh, in this case, the only setting is the sampling interval, which will leave by default. Uh, 
Okay. So let's run the code. The, co the trace collection will stop when it either hits a breakpoint or we manually stop the, the, the target. All the statistics are captured by the statistical function profiling and can be easily viewed. Let's just do an auto fit. You can see now the function percentage, the function being run, and the file name they are they pertain. Also the times that the function ran here. Let's sort by percentage of the running time of the processor. There you are. As expected, the loop while in the main routine runs most of the time waiting for interrupts. Also, the trace viewer contains all the details of the snapshots captured. And you can see the functions, for instance, some of them are pertaining to libraries, but some of them are pertaining to the source code. We can actually navigate to it by simply going and selecting the view source code. You can see that that's a snapshot taken at this function. We can go and keep navigating on the source code through the trace viewer. We can also experiment with tracing variables. For example, let's trace a counter variable in my uh, modified uh, Blinky project. Okay, the code's loaded. Let's let's see how blink count my variable created and let's see how it progress. Again, menu tools, auto trace analyzer, but in this case, let's trace the data variable. I will add blink count here. Actually, it's address. So let's run the code and see how the variable progresses. Okay, just a single value here. However, keep in mind that the x-axis is a time, a function of time. So we can see by zooming out how the variable actually progresses. At last, let's take a quick look at the interrupt analysis. I will use the interrupts code of the TivoWare for that. Okay, similarly, menu tools, auto trace analyzer, interrupt profiling. Similar screen as the other two but with no configurable settings. Let's start. Okay, in this case, I'll run the application and wait until it, it finishes running successfully. The success message will actually happen at the screen of the board. Okay, finished. So now let's take a look at the analysis. You see the summary view shows all the interrupts, all the three interrupts involved and several statistics including the number of running uh, running times that they did, the, the average number of cycles and several other stats. The graph also shows their execution. Again, similarly to the previous case, this this graph is actually heavily zoomed in. So let's take a look at the entire execution run. Now you can see, which is interesting, at the at the end of the execution, two red bars which indicate preemption. 
the interrupts 18 and 17 were preempted by 16, which has a higher priority. So that happened in sequence. However, what we can't see from here is if we zoom really close at the beginning of the execution, you can tell that interrupt 18 actually started executing, then got preempted by 17, which started executing, then got preempted by 16, which run to the end until 17 finished running, as we could see, and whoops. There you are, and then 18 finished running. Okay, that concludes the demonstration. I hope this webinar gave you a good insight about the ATM features and capabilities, and feel free to take a look at the resources available on the TI Wiki. John and I thank you for your time today and hope to see you in our next webinar.